everybody. Um, what happened last night is my question. Uh, last night being Tuesday, the 4th of October. It's Wednesday, the 5th today. Um, something big went down last night. Let me read my notes. Um, I cannot imagine for a minute that this is just me. So I'm going to share it with the collective. Some cards have come out already, and it may be that the end of this reading, I'm still as lost <laughs> as I am now, because I can't quite work out what's happening. But we'll see what comes through. OK, last night, I suddenly woke up to hear the wind change dramatically. So I greeted the wind. And as soon as I greeted the wind, it began to speed up and tumble and crash against the house until it sounded like thunder. And I actually got up because I was convinced it was a thunderstorm. It reminded me of an earthquake, the earthquake energy I experienced about 10 years ago and how that left me feeling dark and murderous all day. So it was like the earth was cracking open and I was getting the words, this blood soaked planet is releasing something. Then I noticed every light bulb in my head was switched on. And it wasn't a download. This was different. This was a mind so active I couldn't switch it off, but something beautiful happened because I just went to the liminal space to see who was there like a chat room and ended up having the most profound conversations with bright, intelligent people about quantum mechanics and metaphysics and uh, soul work and just, it was just rich, beautiful Aquarian energy. Hmm. Okay. So I chatted with these intelligent people all night, haven't slept, I haven't slept, um, but I feel okay. And then when I wake up, I notice I have hyperhidrosis in my fingertips and in my feet. Um, and my fingertips are wet, just I'm literally sitting here with a box of tissues because my fingertips are wet. And my mind goes straight to, is that one of the symptoms of electrocution? Okay, so that's the weirdness that happened in my corner of the planet, I'm UK. So I go to weather warnings and there was a weather warning for strong winds a couple of days ago. Um, and then I do my morning work, uh, emails, messages, that kind of thing. I log into YouTube and on my feed is one of my favorite readers, Cindy who's made a reading that was supposed to be a Taurus monthly reading that turned out to be a collective tornado warning, which I thought was really interesting. I'll post her link in the description box if you wanna go and watch her video. So something big has happened. Um, I've checked the astrology and without digging into the charts, there's nothing really glaringly obvious. Uranus is in that. 18 degree square in Taurus. Saturn is 18 degrees of Aquarius. Okay, that might be interesting. Saturn at 18 of Aquarius. Um, yeah, and that's it. That's all I'm doing with my notes. So let's go into the cards. So first of all, I go to Black Moon Astrology. Sorry, my throat feels weird this morning. It's like an attack on the central nervous system. Take, no, delete that word. It's something happening in the central nervous system that's causing this hyperhidrosis. I feel like my molecules are really, really super alive today. Um, right, let's start. Bear with me, I'm, I'm gonna give myself permission to go all over the place because I feel quite scattered. First card out.
War das das? Hmm. Okay. This is something to do with what we know and what we believe. What we taught, what we are taught and what we believe. I'm just noting it's the 5th of October, which is a 15-6 code, which is devil energy. Fifteen six six twenty one three. That's like really super uber sensitive. Twenty one three. It's kind of mother healing energy. Can I say that's Gaia energy? Question mark. Okay. So truth, truth about what? And, what I've done is I've pulled some of those lovely, beautiful, dark lantern oracle cards. And the card that wanted to go with this, again on that five code, is the unknown. And let's look at this. Okay, so we have severity and mercy, the two pillars of the tree of life. With the goddess, um, wow. This might be speaking to Venus. And us wandering towards this opening. So that's activating my higher heart and lower throat. And this is knowing the unknown. Yeah, my whole body's shaking now. So it's joining in the party, the molecule party. Okay, so Saturn and truth coming in on that six <coughs> of what we know in the heart. That might be speaking to releasing restrictions in the heart, supported by Gaia. Um, hmm, okay. And then we have um, fifth house. Okay, look at these fives coming through. The five seeks dynamic change. Okay, so we're talking about creativity. Um, I was actually writing about creativity, creativity because I'm finally writing <laughs> the book to go with the that sentence deck that I created last year. And I was writing about creativity and actually how challenging it can be because uh, the true energy of creativity is to create and destroy and create and destroy. But we've become so attached to the material world that we might be... Uh, resistant to destruction. Yeah. Well, okay. So this might be the glee of creativity and this might be the fear of destruction. Yeah, we, we attach value that isn't inherent onto things. <laughs> And that can prevent us creating in this Uranian explosive, no boundaries kind of way. Breaking a cup because we need a shard of porcelain. It's that kind of energy. So that might be speaking to what are we afraid to let go of? What are we afraid to break? And I've got the heart coming in here. Are we afraid to break the heart open? Okay, and coming in with creativity is broken dreams. So we've got a beautiful mix of light and dark energy coming in here. So is it safe to say that that portal of mercy and severity is giving us that 15-6 choice? So we're in a choice day. Thank you. We're in a choice day. Broken dreams. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry to be so cliche, but look, you have to break an egg to make an omelet. 
eggs are just like one of those ergonomically perfect things and can challenge us to destroy something we are familiar with, comfortable with, can see the perfection in. Only you can accept or reject your dreams. So, so we're speaking to personal authority here. Personal authority and Saturn wanting us to take hold of, well, it's a spear now. It's no longer a sword, it's a spear. So that speaks to passion and fire. So we're talking about active masculine. This is beautiful. Wow. It's like there's another cross. There's a cross of light and dark and there's a cross of masculine and feminine coming in already. So, fifth house, creativity and broken dreams. What can be risen from the ashes is a question that's coming in. What can you rebirth that you thought was gone, dead, wasted, buried? What can you resurrect? Okay, it's flowing. This is really flowing. Capricorn, I use. Um, coming in on that 22 of the Master Builder. And that's coming in with the trickster energy. So here we go. The devil is coming in to what can I use? And I'm again, I literally had this conversation with somebody the other day. And I was talking about fear of breaking things to create things. And I, and I said something like, as an example, well, you need a pin and there's a pin on the back of this brooch. Why not just take that off? Oh, no, it's a family heirloom and it's worth a lot of money. OK, so sell it and buy a pin. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I can't let it out of the family. And this is the, it's like a false value. It's, it, I could I could write a book on this. It's a false value I use. And it's that trickster energy telling you not to break something because you perceive that it works. But what if you just break it for fuck's sake? For shits and giggles. The trickster's only power is your trust. And again, that goes back to the first card of knowing the difference of what we've been told and what the heart knows. So this is a DNA activation as well. Yeah, I'll, I'll pull some higher dimensional cards, see what's working with us. You are always free to withdraw it, to withdraw your trust. So that's questioning what you are obligated to. And another thing I was writing about yesterday is burdens and who am I without my burdens? Do my burdens give me a sense of false safety and security? Because in my burdens, I become valuable, useful. Maybe I even call that my purpose. Okay, that's cool. Is there joy and passion in there? Is a fiery wand driving that? If it isn't, then you're in a different energy. Big choice point. Big choice point today. Okay, so that all makes sense so far. It's making sense to me. Big choice point. I think I said in the last reading, get your hand on your sword and stand by it. And I think this is why, because big change is coming. It feels like... Big change, and I noticed my body is coming back to center now. So I just needed to get that out. Let's just let that settle for a minute. So if I go to the two underlying cards for these two decks, the underlying card. <laughs> oh, let's go two underlying cards. I don't know what's under that one. So messages, okay, so messages are coming out, around. <laughs> Pisces, Pisces showed up in the last reading, didn't it? Around, I believe, 
and the truth. Okay. There could be a massive revelation. If anybody knows of any dark news channels that aren't in the public eye, do let me know. <laughs> okay. Let's just slow this down. So third house of communication. Third house, Gemini, where Mars has just gone retrograde. Pisces, I believe messages about belief systems. And this might be the electrical energy. <laughs> oh my God, oh my God. Right, missing. So if we go missing ingredient, missing information, look at the earth. Right, I've just read that as the earth. And it's the moon. Owning. Oh my God. Look at these key codes. Scorpio eclipse at the end of the month. Okay, yeah, that's the end of these messages. So we're in it. We're in it. We're in eclipse energy. I literally had a conversation with, um, with a mate of mine the other day where I said, do you think we'll actually see the fall of the cabal in our lifetime? And she said, oh, yeah, absolutely. Second house, owning things. Things that determine our value in the world. How about that? Perceived value in the world. So this could be a week of revelation. It's going to be a month. October is going to be a month. Okay. We're just going to pop those there. So look out for messages. Look out for ugly truths that set you free. Okay, another thing um, that I started to write about yesterday that um, I want to complete is about energy exchange. And it's to do with giving and receiving. And what it will slowly do as we build the practice is it, it will take you into your soma, it will take you into your cells. And so that when you come into this present moment and notice the situation that you're with, the person that you're with, the telephone call that you're on, whatever, and notice what happens to your energy and notice how you feel after that interaction. Because one of the truths is going to be about what takes our energy and what brings us energy or what we bring energy to and leave feeling vital what we bring energy to and leave feeling depleted because that's the sword that's your body going mm -mm, nah. but old values <laughs> shoulda woulda coulda push drive strive be there because people need you that might all be changing your hands on your sword and your body does not lie this is instinctual body does not lie pause Hmm, that's interesting. So the underlying card for the Lantern Oracle is false beliefs. And again, I get moon energy here, 13 cycles of the moon. And what are we being told that isn't true? Mm. Once the untruths that we believe about ourselves are illuminated, so are the ways we can release the false limitations they confine us to. Mm. And the inner tremor is back. 
with this card. Okay, I'm going to bring these two in. Okay, so we have circles, and this speaks about ancestral cycles, learned behavior, the story you were born into as opposed to the story you came here to live. The realization that certain inherited patterns are ready to be released, and it's your choice. And we can do that using radical honesty, 18. 18 is ending the karmic cycle or bringing light into the karmic cycle. Collapsing that belief system to dissolve into the nine and rebirth as a student, come back into page energy ready to learn the next cycle or build the next cycle, write your own karma. It's very powerful, this energy. All right, you're still with me? <clears throat> so then I wanted to draw um, one of the chakra activation cards. <laughs> Gonna be a big reading. So this is talking into soul alignment, the soul coming home to self, the self coming home to soul, that alignment is the deepest truth. One of the conversations I was having in the liminal space last night, they were amazing conversations, was about incarnation from a metaphysical point of view, from a quantum point of view. And the, the physics of just incarnating to conception, that journey from energy into matter blows my mind. <laughs> Every time I focus on it, okay? It's the void coming straight into matter, blows my mind. And then the journey from conception through to end of life just gets so serious. And the joy in that child is killed and wounded and squashed and flattened until the child drills so far down into matter, it all becomes real. And that brooch is real and valuable and must not be let out of the family. Child, need a pin, break the brooch. <laughs> That's the magical child. Soul time, so realignment to the soul. Realization, look at this, oh my God. This is Phoenix energy coming in here, look. <laughs> 23, five is that rise into the higher mind. <laughs> This is the rebirth into a new kind of prosperity. And what did we say yesterday? Limitless, divine abundance. Divine abundance is fully reconnecting with the soul, with the soul expression. This is amazing. <laughs> Magic. Yeah. Wow, okay, stop, because I'm just gonna keep pulling those off the bottom of the deck. Magic, I jokingly said to somebody the other day, my magic is coming back online. I am downloading symbols and being told how to use them and when to use them. And that started last week. And now here, I totally understand why I downloaded those particular symbols and why and where and why <laughs> I've been using them. Um, so magic is coming back online. Um, be unafraid to be magical, but to be magical, you have to be able to freestyle. You have to be able to free associate because the subconscious will want to come in and add old values 
to new things. It's Uranus. Uranus is the genius mind. It can only create what hasn't been created before. And so if we still want to, you know, I mean, my eye goes straight back to broken dreams and we might pull the past to the present, but the present might look like, well, present might look like, which way do I go? <laughs> that five, <laughs> it can turn both ways. It can turn forward and backward. You know, the 15, six is asking us to, again, it's choice. Okay, and then I go to the Gaia deck. And the first card out hmm. are we talking about a divine union and how that may not look I don't know love light and unicorns that might actually look like the earth breaking open that might actually look like crazy weather, tornadoes, earthquakes, and how that affects the physical body, the spiritual, mental, emotion and physical body, integration of the masculine and the feminine. We have the masculine and the feminine in these pillars. King of Earth. The planting of new seeds. And look how private his space is. So he's planting at night, probably in a moon cycle, under a very bright star. This is really, this is, um, I know what this is. This is another Avalon rising. Bear with me. <laughs> okay, I'm back. <laughs> This is planting with nature. And it's the masculine. It's the masculine. So masculine earth. This might be the rebirth of the king. all this masculine energy coming out from the Gaia deck. <laughs> She's giving us the masculine. She's giving us the masculine back. Hopelessness healed. Futility fed. Washing the curtains clean. That's interesting. Hmm. So the nine of fire is kind of like the nine of wands, which is about In another deck, there's a card that says protect the wild and the green. And the nine of wands is about 
the warrior returning home from battle and protecting what has been saved. It's that kind of guardian energy. We had eagle come through, didn't we, in the last reading? Focus your aim. Be not distracted by anything. Be not distracted by anything. Let's try my fingertips. I'm sorry. This is weird energy, it's weird. And I'm avoiding good, bad, it feels good, bad. I'm avoiding that because that's bringing the past to the present. It's new and it's weird and I cannot define it. It's having a profound effect on my physicality. Um, emotionally, I'm in a state of, what is this? It's that kind of slightly guarded and curious, guarded and curious. Plugging. Spiritually, I feel very connected. Well, I mean, look at the underlying Gaia card. That's how I feel. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I want to cry again. <laughs> and emotionally, I feel emotional. <laughs> Oh my God, this is huge, peeps. This is huge. This is realignment. This is a total realignment into something we might not be able to map to. <laughs> like moving to a new city without a set of maps and I remember, I think it was 2020 when I started using the sentence, I'm standing at the edge of my territory with nothing but a handful of crayons. <laughs> like there's no map beyond there. So mapping to new was, it's not new DNA, it's DNA that's been dormant, that is waking up and that is gonna give us new information about where we've come from, what we are and what we came here to be. This is Phoenix, look. This is the burning away of the old. Holy shit. It is the union of the masculine and the feminine, the healing of the king. The bringing of heaven to earth. Avalon. Oh God, wow, I'm so glad I did this reading. Right, I was going to pull some. Okay, let's see what's working with us. Um, so I'm going to invite in galactic energies. If there are any specific galactic energies that want to speak into this. Very welcome. What they're showing me is the black cube. I don't know the name of it. My Middle Eastern friends will know the name of the black cube that thousands of people circle around, not really knowing what it is. It's the obedience to the cube. Like the message is find out what it is before you worship it. Oh my God. Do you know? Oh. That speaks straight. Has anybody seen the new Thor film? Because Marvel is a public information channel. The new Thor film has got a fascinating theme running all the way through it. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> oh. 
Let's start activation. I might guide you to go and get grounded. Um, forget what the mental weather is doing, wherever you are in the world. Get your bare feet on some grass, maybe, or some mud, <laughs> or in amongst the trees, um, so that you can plant, so that you can plant in the earth, whatever it is you're bringing through the magical being. Anchor it in, grounding, Isis energy. 9911, 189, 22. This is goddess energy. This is goddess energy. It's coming in on that 20 code. Nineteen twenty thirty. Yeah, it's got extra numbers in it, but it's coming in on that twenty feet of the goddess energy. <sighs> Are there any other messages, please, from the Galactics? That feels quite quiet. I'm going to go to this deck. Please, from the Galactics, speak into this field. This rebirth might leave you feeling vulnerable. If we're talking about rebirth energy, we're talking about the vulnerability of literally a baby unable to care for itself. And in that, there's a choice to retreat to the comfort of what we know or keep pushing through into this, what is this energy? I think we've just wrapped the reading up there. It's happening, keep holding the vision. And this is where you have gotta know what your vision is. What is your vision as we move forward out of this dark triad that has been in control for 2,100 years? <laughs> as we birth this new earth, that's stunning. Well, well, well. Okay, I've never seen this before. Okay, this looks like DNA and a tail. Oh my God. There's a face appearing in that. Just focus in on that card for a moment. Can you see it? There's a face coming into view. This is talking about DNA splicing. Wow, that is something about creating a universal spine that can be used in many species. So we're talking about creation as something different to evolution. Well, that might lead us into the next video. Thank you for that. That's wonderful. Okay, people, that's it. Um, I hope in some way that 
this is digestible. My whole body has calmed down, which tells me that it just needed to come through and come out. And um, I'm going to go and drink the contents of a small river now. Um, my body is getting parched. And I'm going to sew a towel onto my hands. <laughs> what is this craziness? Okay, enjoy the craziness. Be crazy with it, dance crazy, sing crazy. Birth crazy, <laughs> whatever that looks like. Um, have a cracking week and I'll see you all again soon. Take care, bye.